Happy Halloween everybody, it's Adrian from River Valley Paranormal. Put together a video of some uh, investigation footage and actually just conversations about things that we've witnessed. Uh, I just thought I'd put together something for you guys to watch this Halloween. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, this is I think the 10th or could be the 12th time that I've tried to do this video. I can make a blooper reel that goes on and on and on. Uh, my life is a blooper. But anyhow, hey check this out. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, filming. So you can get him come in a little so you can see yourself right there. There you go. Hello, I can't see yourself very well. You can see ourselves. There we go. All right. So tell me, what 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 happened? What did you see? It down here, but you're looking at the camera, but point down this way. So we were standing here and we were looking down this direction. And we saw what looked like somebody had hung themselves, and you could see the feet and legs hanging. But you didn't see it, just the upper part, just the legs first. Then later, it looked like they're just dangling, dangling like somebody had hung themselves. And we were trying to figure out what that was, why, you know, what was going on. And then it looked like it changed positions, and all of a sudden, its head was down and the feet were up. So not like it hung itself, it was just... It went direct opposite. That's weird. So the feet were on the ceiling and the head was hanging down. That was our first time seeing. Now I remember when you when you told me about it, it sounded, it, you said it was more like tentacles at first. The, no, no, that was something else. That was something else. That was not what we're talking about here. No. So. Fred, Fred is, what we call Fred, is always been something that hangs from the ceiling and will come down off the ceiling. No tentacles. No tentacles. He's also come through the floor. Yeah, he goes through the floor, uh, go on the walls sometimes. Um, but you'll see an arms hanging down, you'll see legs hanging down from the ceiling, and he follows you up and down the hallway. He will follow you up a floor and down a floor. But this was the first floor that we ever saw him. And where do you see the tentacles? I don't remember tentacles. I, you told me it was like it was just thing that had like stuff hanging down. It wasn't. You didn't say it was feet. It was feet. It feet. was. It, it was like you know you could see the gap between the legs as they were hanging. That's weird. Now you guys, you saw it, right? Come here, woman. <laughs> so. You, was you standing with him when he did it, or you saw it on your yes, own? Yes, I've seen him more than once. Um, one of the times we saw him, he fell from his feet position to the floor, and you could hear him scraping the floor. So as, could, it was an audible thing, too? Yes, yes, as he was coming like toward us. And then when he got close, he hit the side of the wall and continued on. And I think I closed my eyes at that point. Did he, but, did he ever make <laughs> Did you ever make a noise or anything? Did we ever catch an EVP at that time? No, the only like noise was from his feet, hands. Feet, hands. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was claws. Was scratching. Yeah, scratching. That, that, that sucks, I don't like that. <laughs> no, I didn't that's either. That's kind of <laughs> creepy moments. Uh, all right, that's cool. All right, that's one story. Hi. Okay, we're at room 309. But of course, we can't tell you where we're at, but you know where we're at. Anyhow, uh, Ron, you got a story? I do. We were on an investigation, a uh, private investigation, and we noticed that this door was slowly moving back and forth. And the lady I was with wanted to go in there. I was dressed up with a lab coat, I had a stethoscope around my neck. We went into this room. And just after setting foot in this room, my stethoscope was yanked off of me and landed across the room, which freaked the girl out that I was with. And, and it she, didn't freak you out? No. Uh -huh. It didn't freak me out. I'm yeah. like, okay, you want me to check your lungs? I am afraid, <laughs> afraid of ghosts, but I don't like being yanked off me. I think that was going to freak me out just a little bit. Just it always bit. startled me when it happened, but... But no screaming. No screaming or running or anything like that. <laughs> 
So that was room 309. We've had a lot of stuff happen uh, around this part of the hospital. Uh, and on our one investigation, it was our first investigation, right? Well, I don't know what you're going to say, so I the, the, the high. Oh, no. Was it? No. See, behind this is a lockup area. You'll see a lot of people will... Uh, uh, do you'll see their chairs in there, so a lot of people will do uh, EVP sessions there, try to make contact. But the door is wedged open right now, but way back in the day, it never was. And one time I come in, I opened up the door, and I made it, uh, everybody know that I'm uh, gonna open the door, me opening the door, so because it made a sound, I said, I'm gonna take a picture, I'm in. And as soon as I said that, we have an EVP of a little girl that says, woman. or a woman, that says, Hi, and I thought that was kind of cool. One of my one of the cool stories about the place. Anyhow, and this is Tina. What do you got about this? Um, I don't have any stories. You don't have nothing. <laughs> no. Not a thing. My story's on the fifth floor. Oh, it's coming. All right, fifth floor is coming. See, nice. When Ron was stressed like the doctor, I was down there with the other half of the group. And that's when I heard the blood curdling scream. Down. At the other end of the floor. At the other side? Yes. Blood curling. It was blood curling. I mean, put the hair on your arms, stood up. And everybody that I was with, they said, what was that? And I said, well, it sounded like a scream. And somebody was wanting me to check her phone. And so I was listening to the recorder too. And sure enough, I caught it on my uh, recorder. And I'll quote the guy. He said, sure as shit, that was a scream. <laughs> I said, yes, I believe it was. Uh, checked the outside, you know, through the windows to make sure there wasn't somebody outside. Um, and then we met up with uh, you guys down here at this end, and you guys didn't hear the scream, but we did. Um, that, and like I said, everybody in, you know, four square blocks should have heard that. It was just so loud, so... That was an, that was an interesting mm -hmm. one for me. So, all right, kind of fun. Another one, another three minutes down. <laughs>
we didn't have anything that we can prove, but we have a great story that we all three witnessed, and I think it, it just it was fantastic. So it's great about it. You don't have to actually be investigating to have a cool experience. And I think some of our coolest experiences here in this building happened during events while we're watching other people do the thing, like people walking up the hallways and shadow people coming out and walking up with them in the hallway. So it's great. But this was this is one of my favorite stories in the building. I thought I'd share that with you. Okay. So this area here, we uh, one of our coolest pictures ever was right in that door there. Uh, pretty nice. We'll try to get that out there for people to see. But this is Tina's favorite story in this building. I think it's your favorite story. So wouldn't you say it's your favorite story? One of my favorite One of your favorite stories. aha moments anyway. It's my favorite aha. I told you so. Moment. Okay. So what's happening? So we're on an investigation and uh, we stop in this area for like a just kind of a chit chat on what we'd been experiencing um, and uh, somebody I think it was Adrian was, took a picture and and I was probably about here and then it was like a semicircle of people and I saw a man standing right beside me when there was nobody standing beside me and uh, I told everybody that, that I saw a man, he was tall and white, almost like a, uh, maybe like an orderly or a nurse or something, it was all white, his shoes were white, he had dark hair, very tall. And then of course Adrian was all like, oh no, it was flash off of the reflection in the mirror, I mean in the window, and, and I'm like, no, it was right here, uh, standing here, not, it wasn't by the glass. And, uh, and we got an EVP at that time uh, of a man's voice saying, I'm here. And uh, of course, when we did the review and I heard that, it was just great because then I yelled aha and took my headphones off and put them on Adrian's head and said, listen. It was very dramatic and very excited. He did not believe me. No one believes me, but that was one of the, the uh, full body apparitions I saw here. And it just happened to be in the flash. I, I seem to see them when the camera's going, flash goes off. Uh, I've seen many, many that way, but that was just one of them. It was really cool to know that he was there and our uh, recorders caught him. And it's great to have a personal experience backed up by evidence. Especially when nobody believes you. <laughs> We are on the fourth floor. Hi, it's me again. Uh, another story. It was after an event, uh, and I was clearing the building. We were ready to go home. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I had just come off of the fifth floor, down the stairs, and I uh, was by myself. Big no no if you're investigating, but we were all in a hurry and there was only a few of us, so everybody had their chores to do, and mine was to clear the upper floors and uh, uh, come around the corner and head towards the stairwell to go all the way downstairs. And something rushed up behind me really fast, like it was going to. I remember that. Overtake me. Yeah. And uh, and I just flung around real fast and put my flashlight up. And of course I didn't see anything, but I definitely felt that it was right there. Uh, so that's kind of my fourth floor story. And that was uh, kind of a creepy one because I've never been rushed like that. Uh, at that time, I've been rushed a couple of times since then, but, but that one was, it had an impending, gonna get you feel to it. So, and I was by myself, everybody else was downstairs, so it was four floors up. I would have been that scream that everybody heard. Yeah. Craziness. Uh, and I kind of had the same kind of thing going on. Now I had a, a different time. What I was doing was uh, we were hosting another team and they needed help. And 
Yeah, I'm, I'm one of these people who say we need to have uh, two people all the time when we go up in the building. We find ourselves alone all the time uh, because you don't think about it. You don't, you don't think about a protocol. I got to take care of this thing. And so somebody is having a problem on the fifth floor. So I come walking up this floor, fourth floor, same thing like Tina's talk about how she was felt like something rushing up behind her. I felt, I mean, it was just me on the floor. I'm walking along. I'm hearing another set of footsteps and uh, they're right behind me. I stop couple more steps and then they stop. And then, you know, you're in the dark hallway like that. And, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you're like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, maybe I should have a company next time. All right. Cool. All right, so we were on an investigation, a uh, public investigation, and we were just, Robin and I were on this floor. Tina was above us on the next floor, and we were waiting for people to come up. Fred, our buddy that likes to hang from the ceiling, was very active that night, and we decided that he was kind of creeping us out a little bit too much because he kept dropping from the ceiling to the floor and then back up on the ceiling and on the wall. And so we went around and were standing out on the stairwell and I was looking over the edge. Yeah, and at that point, I got this just horrible feeling that Ron was gonna get pushed over that edge of the stairs and down into the basement. And so I, I literally grabbed him by a shirt and pulled him back <laughs> and told him, don't stand there because I don't have a good feeling about that. And that's when the guys we, came. We had two guys come up and they wanted to go down the hallway and we said, sure, go right on ahead. And Fred followed them down the hallway and you could hear what sounded like scraping mm -hmm. on the walls as he, was as he was going down there after them. Yeah. I don't like the scraping. Yeah. Uh oh. I do believe that this was the same night that uh, uh, Fred went through the floor because I yes. was on the yes. fourth floor and I saw a head and shoulders pop up through the floor and then raise all the way up. So, uh, yeah, and then I had asked them if they had seen him and they said yes, he was active. And, uh, yeah, that's the first time that I saw him go through the floor and come up that way instead of like using the stairs like a normal person. Yeah. Fred's creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> yeah. creepy. We name him Fred because it sounds more uh, nice yes. than, or less scary, I should less say. Scary. Less scary. Than, <laughs> Something yeah. that crawls on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's a two word that comes to mind when you see that. Right? Yes. <laughs> We were so, doing a, a public event, yeah. um, and I got the overwhelming feeling that something was standing next to me. And so I turned, and I can't explain other than it was darker than the dark that's in this hallway. Right now it's really dark. And so I let my eyes kind of focus, and then I kept looking up, and the, the shadow person was about this tall, and he was giving me the vibes of, you looking for me? Here I am, kind of thing, you know? And about that time, Tina, said, I think there's a shadow person by you. And I turned to her and then I thought, oh crap, the big shadow guy is still behind me, you know? And so when I turned back around, he was gone, but it was, he was pretty intimidating. Where were you seeing it? Oh, well, I was standing she, yeah, here and she was up against that wall over there. Yeah. And you could see the shadow moving around her. You know how they are here, they get up in your face and in yes. your bubble. And, he did. and they got my face here, right behind where I'm standing right now. Yeah. Right? And, was and I was just, just in case she didn't know it, I was letting her know that there was something standing around by her. Yeah, he was. Yes, yeah, so, but like I said, when I turned to address Tina, see, hear what she was saying, he was gone when I turned back around. Yeah. So, but he was definitely intimidating. It, it was definitely the looking for me vibes yeah and that's kind of the uh kind of the thing that was happening with me because uh i was doing an event leading the people and they're all behind me i took the front and, and this hallway's pretty dark it takes a while for your light your eyes to get used to how dark it was and uh 
and here I am, I'm standing here, and there's a, there's a door at the far end. You can see the light start coming through the window. And I, I starting to see that, I said, oh, yeah, there's somebody right there. And there was this group of girls that were standing right behind me, maybe four feet behind me. And they were, they were like, yeah, we see him too. I say, he's about six feet in front of you. He's like, no, he's right next to you. And so I'm, I'm looking this way and I turn to the side and like Robin said, it was right in front of my face. And although I couldn't hear anything, you definitely see the movement, like you don't belong here, you need to get out type of thing, very animated. And they're right there. So, I mean, had me kind of pressed against the wall. I mean, not touching me, but I don't like going through ghosts or being touched by ghosts. So uh, that was pretty wild that we kind of both had the same yeah. kind of thing happen. Two, two different times. That only happens down here. That they only, get in they, like they only get, you really get in your face down here and the basement, Ooh. all right. Set up, um, and go. Well, we were in the basement. Uh, we were five of us in here. Uh, Robin's mom was with us and she told me, move your feet. And so I started moving my feet Something did not like that and grabbed my arm, very painfully grabbed my arm and did not release me until I got up on the first floor. Just help, like a grip? Like, yeah, like Before a death grip going up the stairs and onto the first floor. They did not want me down here. Obviously a bouncer. A bouncer. Yes. I don't, I'm not it's sure they had bouncers here. Janitor, okay. Dirty in the floors. Yeah, it was dirty in the floors. Uh, it. Yeah. yeah, and it was very painful. I could feel it for probably 20 minutes later. I could still feel where my arm was grabbed. Well, yeah, that happens when they touch you. Tina will tell you about that. She'd, <laughs> she'd been touched a few times. Gone through a couple of times, and, and it, sometimes it lasts for days. You're numb for days. We'll talk about that a little later. A little later. All right, bye. <laughs> Hello again, I got another one. We're in the basement now, but uh, it used to be the old kitchen area. And uh, I was here, and once again, there were pictures being taken of the room, just here and there. And uh, I was facing this way, over there. As you can see, it's kind of just junky. And over Look, here- A little different than it does right now. It does a little, it, it was actually part of a haunted house, so it was, uh, I think, a graveyard scene or something. Yes, it was. And uh, so over here, just in the flash of the camera, I see a patient. I knew this because I had a gown on. And it was an old lady, and she had salt and pepper hair, real long salt and pepper hair. And her head was down, and she had kind of a long nose. Couldn't see any eyes because her hair was kind of over her face. And she was just standing there. Didn't move. In a patient gown. Didn't say anything. And there, what was weird was there wasn't any reason for a patient to be down here because this was the kitchen. This is a kitchen. And uh, so that kind of surprised me seeing her there. It doesn't surprise me anymore that I see stuff in the flash of the camera, but uh, it surprised me seeing a patient in the kitchen area because the patients weren't allowed down here in the kitchen area. And what does that, yeah, what does that tell you? It tells me that uh, she could go wherever she wanted and it's not a reoccurring thing. Not a residual. Yeah. Ah. So that, and that was kind of, uh, with the whole, the ring thing, Samara, uh, it's the first thing that popped in my head when I saw her, other than she was a, a shorter old lady with salt and pepper hair. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was a little unsettling, just a little bit. We're live! Alright. Oh. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. I think Robin's head cut off. What? No. I'm there. I'm there. She's not. Adrian's head cut off. Yeah. Adrian's head cut off. Yeah. You can see me. That's just that it's not showing the whole thing. That's square oh. and the oh. thing is. Yeah. Why? 
Okay, because you kept cutting my head off earlier. I was, wondering, yeah. I was wondering about that. It's okay. It's not like I'm tall. I have no had no professional training. <laughs> Anyhow, no, we're here in this wonderful building, and we've talked about a couple of stories that we've had at, in the building. Uh, there's been a lot of other things happening in the building. Don't give me that look. And uh, uh, but. We've had many stories other places. You said there was a couple of stories that you wanted to talk about. And but when we let off tonight and I said I wasn't here, I want to take up talk about stuff here, so we're gonna talk about that stuff now. So you want me to start? Yeah. Because you actually got some great stories. Actually. It's because I'm always bait. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, I'm not gonna name the place. That we were in a a home that was done up like a museum. So it was an old historic place, and uh, we had some activity going. And uh, <laughs> I I said this was kind of early on, uh, time wise in our team age. So we were still new, and you kind of tweak as you go things that you do, and this actually um, got tweaked as soon as it happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we were sitting around this table that had food on it, it was uh, plastic food, and uh, and I had said, uh, can you touch one of us? And there were several of us in the, in the same room, in the dining room. Yeah, I, I, was on, I was on the floor, and I had an investigator in the chair up adjacent to you? Oh uh, yeah, at the door. And then there was another one sitting on the other side of the table from you. To the side of Yes. Because I was sitting like here and there was nobody there, somebody there, there. So anyway, I just, and in general, can you, can you touch one of us? And, uh, because you want to see if they have enough energy to, you know, poke you or pull your hair or whatever. And, uh, the investigator over there said, uh, are you moving your foot underneath the table? And I said, no. He said, I could have swore something just moved underneath the table. And about the time he said that, I felt a hand on my ankle. Grabbed your ankle. Grabbed my ankle. And then another hand grabbed my knee on the other leg. And it crawled up into my lap, these hands, with weight, so it was heavy, and then went into my stomach inside me, and went up my body, and then left my body out my right shoulder. And of course it upset my stomach, because just the energy of it uh, doing that. And from then on, I never said, can you touch <laughs> one of us, I said, uh, can you shake my hand? I'll put my hand out, uh, or give it a suggestion like that. I never leave it vague, yeah, yeah. so they can Come just do whatever. Hand. Uh, can you shake my hand? So just kind of uh, uh, beware of what you ask for. Be specific, folks. So, uh, so stuff like that. That was know. the same investigation that you and Jen had the face in the flash, right? Because you were. I don't know if it no, was that one or the nobody, next investigation. Same, same location. Same location. Yeah, is it, might have like been the said, next a historic home is set up as a historic home. And one of the stories was that a woman had died in, during childbirth. Uh, no, actually, we didn't know that until after, afterwards. Afterwards. And we did a little bit, a little bit of digging on what was upsetting this lady. But we, there were no sensitives on the team. Uh, Jennifer's not sensitive, you're not sensitive, and uh, who started it? Was it you? Uh, it was me because y'all were taking pictures, again, flash, 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 and I kept seeing a woman's face, and it didn't matter which way I turned my head, every time they would take a picture, she would be right in my face, and I, I'm saying I'm seeing this woman's face, and then <clears throat> Jen started seeing it, and then all of a sudden, uh, I don't know why, I just started crying just crying and I'm like I felt stupid because I didn't know why I was crying and then yeah, she's crying 
And laughing at the same time because she felt stupid that she was crying. Right. My emotion was the laughing, but the crying was whatever the woman was trying to show me. And, um, and then... And then Jennifer started. It would leave me, and then she would start crying. So we were holding hands, and you could feel it come up your arm, and then all of a sudden just an overwhelming sadness, and then you just start crying. And you don't know why. It's just the weirdest thing. And then, and then I you, think I took like 300 pictures during you, this, this whole time. And then you'd feel it go down your arm, and then she goes, here it comes, here it comes. And then she would start crying. And when she was crying, I was laughing because I knew that that's how I looked <laughs> to her when I was crying. And uh, later, we found out that one of the women that lived in that home had uh, lost a baby during childbirth. So I think that that was the woman we had looked at some pictures and stuff, and it just so happened that we found her uh, a baby's grave out there was a, a you know a family cemetery a long time ago. You you buried your family in a family yeah, cemetery right, right outside, right the, outside the house. Uh, we found. Uh, a, a little grave for a child, a baby, that uh, that died the same day he was born. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking that, that that was what it was. Now, we don't know 100%, you know, but I'm pretty sure that, that that's what it was. But that that was also a weird thing. It's just weird when you have somebody else's emotions making you do something. So When you're not a sensitive. I mean, I guess no. that's, that's a... I don't know. I guess there are people who deal with it all the time, but we don't. <laughs> so it was kind of that. That was that was interesting from my perspective to watch because I was like, because I know you and you're not a crybaby. You're not a crybaby. <laughs> Only if you and, make and, me mad, and then I'm trying not to kill you. <laughs> yeah. But it just the fact that all of a sudden it just happened. You've never done. You haven't done it since. Once here. Oh, on the on the yeah. third floor, but. Uh, oh, but I didn't cry, but I felt the sad. So, uh, but yeah, that's I, it. I too have felt that as I walked yeah. through whatever entity that was. So, what's your favorite story? Not uh, just here, anywhere. Uh, sitting in my den. In your den, not even investigating. Not even investigating. <laughs> Watching TV. My dogs asleep on my lap. My other dogs at my feet. And look over, and I see the other recliner rocking back and forth. <laughs> and I just kind of turned and looked and said, I hope that you're enjoying what I'm watching, because I'm not changing channels. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty funny. It was just rocking away. That's, that's, it was just that, rocking. That's pretty cool. <laughs> what about you, man? My favorite one is from my house also. Um, I was in our living room, and my mom was out on the deck with the dogs, and so I got up to go get something to drink in the kitchen, and um, as I'm walking through the kitchen, I hollered at my mom. I'm like, hey, do you want anything to drink? And she turned around to address me, and she said, there's a man behind you, so <laughs> I turn around fist up because I'm thinking somebody's in our house. And I turned around, and, and, and I'm like, where, where? And I hear the door open behind me, her coming in the house. And then it dawns on me, we have wood floors. So I didn't hear yeah. anybody running. <laughs> so then at that point, I knew she had seen something. Um, and so I turned around, and she's like, Robin. It was a soldier, and she describes him to a T. And uh, so, you know, we're like, okay. And so my mom tells my aunt later, um, what should happen, and my aunt's like, you shouldn't tell people that. You're going to think you're crazy. <laughs> well, about, I don't know, four or six months later, my aunt had to have eye surgery, and so we said, please come stay with us, you know. That way you're close to Fort Smith if you have to have go back to the doctor. And uh, she called my mom one day, and she said, Nancy, I just saw a man come out of your pantry. It was a soldier. <laughs> At which point my mom says, you shouldn't tell people that. They're going to think you're crazy. <laughs> so Did she, she woo-woo? Who, my aunt? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've not known her to, but yeah, yeah. she did that day. She yeah, did. she was that day. <laughs> she was woo wooing all over the place on that day. <laughs> but that's one of the, my favorites. It's you know. I, I like the story uh, of your washer or dryer had gone out. Oh yeah. <laughs> and your brother-in-law came over to, to fix it. Fix oh, it. Thank you. Is yes, that that's the thing. Yes. And. A potted plant or something yeah, got knocked cat. over, and he stopped and cleaned it up, and all of a sudden there was, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> as, as he was leaving to go out the door, 
someone, a female voice said, thank you. And he said he turned around and went, nope. <laughs> he said he couldn't get in his truck fast enough. Did a, did a, did a cast for the friend to go. Yeah. 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 All kinds of experiences in our home, so yeah. it's always at the super personal ones. But we've had a lot of a lot of creepy moments, uh, and uh, one of the ones that yeah yeah <laughs> one. she she not hey oh she, uh, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. The video I'm reminding <laughs> Tina of her story, <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, another home investigation we did, and uh, there are spirits that do try to intimidate you. Uh, and this is one that uh, there was, I don't know how much you want to get into it. Uh, not deep not into deep, it. But uh, the, I, was, uh, I was in the bedroom where a lot of the activity, negative activity, was happening or had happened. And uh, we try to do line of sight so that way nobody's left alone. Uh, so we had one person in one bedroom, one person in another bedroom, one person in the hallway, which was him, person in the bathroom, and person in the other bedroom. And that way everybody could see somebody and they weren't. Yeah, I had line of sight themselves. with every one of my investigators. I didn't want anybody out there, especially because of the history of this home. So I was sitting on the edge of the bed, the, the foot part of the bed, uh, where this person had had a negative thing happened. And we were trying to see if I could feel anything or if anything was there at the time. And uh, it had been a long time since she'd had that something happen. Uh, so, you know, we were in there doing what we do and trying to figure out what it was. And About six months? It was, I think it was longer than that, but it a long time. And Right in front of me was a dresser with a big old mirror on it, and I could see myself, which is always great. And uh, but I could see behind me, and I kept seeing something move, and so I started paying attention, and it looked like half of a figure, half of a person. It's a, it a head and shoulders, and the torso. I never saw any legs. In the bed. It was it was behind me. Yes, in the bed. And, uh, it, it, and it was doing this, like it was scooching on its butt towards me. It was doing kind of a, so when it went like this, it was behind me in the mirror. All I could see was me. But then when it went the other way, I could see it. But every time I saw it, it was closer. It was like one of those nightmare movies, you know, that it's like, now you see me, now you don't. But when you do, I'm closer and you gotta run. <laughs> Uh, so I just kind of watched it to, to see where it was going with it, it was, or where it was coming with it. Uh, and every time I saw it, it was closer and closer, and then all of a sudden I could feel cold on my back. So I knew that it was right there at me. And I just kind of braced for whatever, whatever was going to happen. Because, uh, you know, my job is to figure it out. And all the time I'm sitting there and she telling me what's happening and I can't see because I'm like uh, just right off to her left not six feet not even probably four feet because I'm standing in the doorway at this point and trying to see what she is seeing and he can't see it but I can see it in the mirror and I can feel it behind me so right as I know it's close enough to touch me it just disappears and the cold goes away and I tell him, I said, well, whatever it was, it's not here anymore, and I don't feel the cold anymore. And it was like seconds, seconds. And I see it raise up out of the bed again, back where it was, comes up, and then does the wobble, 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 closer, closer, closer. And then I start feeling the cold, and I'm like, okay, it's going to do something this time. Got to me, and then disappeared again. That was the last of it. I only, only saw it those two times. But I think it was trying to intimidate me 
to get me to run. And me being the stubborn person that I am, refused <laughs> to run. It's also not the first time that uh, this, this location tried to intimidate a member of the team. Uh, so that happened earlier on in the night too. So that one, that one just seems a little more specific and also from where it was at. So, yeah. I've had to remind myself more than once when your instincts are boom, bolt, you know, yeah. go, this is what you're here for. You know, we're, we're, this is what we're here for. So, and I've not ever run or there, bolted, but. No such thing as dude run on this team. No, 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 no uh, dude run. If there no. is a dude run, the dude is no Gone. longer on the team. No, 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 the no uh, I can't say that I've ever been scared on an investigation, but I can say that I've been booed several times. <laughs> and a uh, matter of fact, just shortly after your incident, we're in that room. And I'm sitting on the head, on the foot of the bed with you, seeing you know, seeing if anything had happened, nothing happened. And uh, once again, yeah, you know, Tina says she sees things in pictures every now and then. Well, I saw something in a picture because somebody took, took a picture. I can't remember if it's you or somebody else coming into the hallway. Can't remember who took the picture. But in the flash, there's a face right here. But and I and it, it was <laughs> a dolly. It was a doll. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, I could be booed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all can. I think one of my favorite times in this building was playing hide-and-seek. Uh, hide-and-seek is was creepy, though. It, it was. We were, we're trying to have fun. And, uh, Sometimes yeah. you need downtime. Yeah. Right. And, uh, yeah. So we thought we would do that. And so, you know, you're hiding and thinking, okay, this is the perfect spot, and I'm hiding so good. And then things start moving around you, yeah. and you realize, no, you're not, you're not. It's easy, yourself. it's easy to be caught when you're in a dark going. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Your knees are rattling. <laughs> yeah, we well, ha I had a, one here where I saw that we had a, a lady that was a paying customer for here for a public hunt, and she was like, "Just bring it on, all of you ghosts, come here," you know, and um, I started seeing. Like, I call it the, the gray swirlies because it's kind of a, like, oil-water swirly mixture. Um, and I started seeing that, and I'm, like, telling them, and they're not seeing it. So I'm, like, come here and stand behind me, you know. And then I think you saw it, and then yeah. Tina saw the gray swirlies. And then we see this, the shadow come, and it just, you couldn't even see the lady's Encom legs. I mean, it totally encompassed her. Yeah, it, that was, that was cool but yeah I, 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 kind of scary too. yeah I was kind of scared for the lady because I was like she were gonna come out of there or, but, <laughs> you know but I don't even think she was really aware of I I don't think she saw it no she didn't see it no from but, where she was at. no but boy yeah. we, we were all and behind we her see her so. no yeah so we had no idea and that's what actually happened. Change my bad. <laughs> happened Adrian before as well how do you change hold the that to another story <laughs> So I have another story. Uh, you know, this building brings back some great memories. And uh, we did a lot of public events here. And it always tickled me to no end these girls would bring their boyfriends, big burly guys, <laughs> to come in here. And Thinking that this, it's all full of it. Right. Full of this it. is so stupid. I don't know why you're wanting to go here. <laughs> Fun stuff. And they get up in the building and they're ready to go within five minutes because they're scared. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it freaked them out so bad seeing the shadow people move. Instead. It's one thing that people talk about it, and then when you actually see it. See it. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And, yeah. and they were ready to bail. Yeah. They were done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, talk about your guy. Who, uh, the guy with the Reese's? With the Reese's, yeah. He said, yeah, he came up from the basement. And I uh, said he got us twenty five dollars worth, and he was gonna spend the rest of the time out in the parking lot in his truck eating Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I didn't> <laughs> that was uh, that was basement one of those nights. The basement was crazy busy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good time. I had a guy tell me one time. He's like, nobody said this. Bloop was real. <laughs> you know, he was ready to go. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we always say that it's a haunted location, but not like, a haunted house mm -hmm. type with things that jump out at you and clowns and whatever. We let people know that they're coming to an actual haunted location that's active. And uh, it don't, I guess it doesn't relay well until they get here and actually start seeing stuff. And then we're like, you know, we, we introduce them to our team and we'll be up in the building and go, oh, that's somebody. That's somebody down there doing that. And we'll walk them right down there and show them that there ain't nobody down there. And what they're seeing is what they're seeing. And, and uh, yeah, and then, then they get freaked out. Once well, we've had that several that times of people being in a group and somebody else come up to the group and they're thinking there's four people and they come in mm -hmm. and then they stand and stand in a group of three. They're the fourth person. They're like, the there, was, there was another person there. So it's always pretty, it's awesome. Uh, I've always, Tina and I, when we're doing events, like we'd like to hang out in the middle and just watch what's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. And we'll constantly see people, you know, couples walking up the hallway and they're usually walking at like a, at a good clip. They're not investigating. They're, mm -hmm. look, I don't know what they're doing. They're just walking yeah. through the building. Walking fast. And then, uh, and then we'll see like a shadow person will step out of one of the rooms and just walk right behind them. And the next thing you know, uh, There'll be an, a group of people congregate. Usually, Tina will start it, but the group of people will congregate and they'll be standing behind her. And then there's like the talk going on. I was like, Oh, you see that? You see that? Because they start seeing what Tina's seeing. So it's always uh, good well, to pay attention to the investigators. There's always somebody that goes, What are you doing? Yes. And I'm like, I'm just watching everybody walk down the hallway. Why? Well, I'm watching the shadow people come out the doors and follow them. <laughs> Oh my God, were they following me? I'm like, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then that gets them, that gets them watching, and then I point out, I said, well, watch these people. They're going to walk past this door, like three doors down on the right. And as soon as they pass a door, watch behind them. And then the suck moment, right? Yeah. You'll hear it. <laughs> Every time, they, they'll see it, and then they'll suck in air, and they'll go, oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to tell them when they get down here. So then they tell them, and then they start watching. And then before you know it, the whole floor sitting there watching nothing because they're all standing behind me. So, yeah, it's great. My um, my nephew came to one of our, our public events. And now, mind you, I was on the team by, by this time. And uh, he actually started seeing some stuff. And he's like, where's Tina? And I'm like, I think she's standing up by the middle. I think we need to go with Tina. She, I think she knows what she's doing, and I think it's safer with <laughs> Tina. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> what am I? <laughs> what am I? Chopped liver. But yeah, he, he thought Tina was like the ghost guru, and um, he thought it was much safer with Tina than his own aunt. But you know, we had a we had a lady that uh, uh, was a manager at one of the restaurants there in Fort Smith, and she came with her daughters, right? Uh, I think she came with some of the staff. I don't think it was her staff. daughters. Yeah. But they were all. Uh, they were all trying to stuff behind me, <laughs> because we were in the basement, and we, we were pointing out the movement, right? And they were like, you know, something's blocking my way. I can't see. And I'm like, yeah, there's a shadow person standing right in front of you now. A shadow person has masks, right? So you don't see through them. There, it's like trying to it's like a wall right in front of you and if you don't realize it's a shadow person that's what it looks like it just feels like your vision stops like right yeah here. so when you're close you can't you don't notice it for what it is mm -hmm. but if you're if you're far away you're like oh you've got the light behind it it's obviously what it is so <laughs> somebody was saying look there's one down there and i said there's one standing right beside you you know <laughs> i can see it you can't see it and uh yeah it, after a while, there was three people trying to stuff between my, the wall and my back, and they're off. Yeah, right, right behind you. I got I got a little weight on me, but I didn't have enough to block three people from what was in the room. So uh, it was it was great. With it was fun. Every foot pulled. <laughs> do you do you remember when we went to the uh, the national park and the guys were by the watering hole and you and I had walked oh, off? Oh, yes. That was that was good. We Tina and I had walked off. A, a trail and we left our guys at the prairie grove yeah. yes yeah i didn't know if i yeah you yeah. can take prairie okay. grove and um so we left the guys at the watering hole and she and i had walked up further up the path and um we turned around at one point and there was an extra person at the watering hole that wasn't one of us one of our guys and uh 
that was cool. And then we the man, her, yeah. In the go grass. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. They kept popping his head up. Yeah. And then it would go down in the grass and he'd pop his head up. And then we got to watching that. And it, and he was advancing. He would pop his head up and he would walk a couple of steps and then hide in the grass. And he would pop his head up and walk a couple of steps and hide in the grass. And and we just got to watching that. And I'm like, it's got to be a soldier. Because mm -hmm. he was actually advancing on what would have been where the, the shot we're coming from mm -hmm. and uh which we found out later that that's the direction that they went and they were mm -hmm. getting fired upon uh and that was cool and see the, and i always horses. talk and i always talk about it i don't believe in residual haunts but remembering that that true because that mm -hmm. that i can't that would be something that would be definitely be something that would be a re residual but it, but i would think that a residual would happen why would it happen then why would it happen at that time why would it happen because it was not on the uh, no. anniversary of the battle or no. any of that stuff. So. Well, we had another residual, I think, residual, the horse clopping. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, a whole, whole yeah. bunch of them yeah. by as yeah. they were walking down the trail. And, and not a horse could, in sight. Yeah. Not a horse and inside. you could, you heard them coming yeah. and you heard them pass you yeah. and go. And it was like, it was very cool. Loud. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, very cool. Yeah. Well, what about the story of you going into the elevator? in Eureka Springs. Oh, that was at the Basin Park. At the Basin Park Hotel. Yeah, yeah. at the Basin Park Hotel. Yeah, uh, all the people at the Basin Park was over at the Crescent because it was going to be a wedding the next day and they were having a big before wedding uh, party. And uh, uh, we were, uh, me and some friends were just there to walk around. Wasn't there really to stay the night or anything. We went up there just to kind of Check it out. We went to see the Crescent Hotel, and it was full up. It, well, actually, um, we went there first, and there were so many people, and it was so loud that, uh, yeah, you couldn't really do anything. And uh, then we went to the Basin Park, and, uh, and we asked if we could uh, just look around at the architecture, and the guy behind the desk said yes. And uh, we had our recorders on, and we was recording. And then we saw maybe two people in the whole building besides the guy behind the front desk. And uh, we went all the way up to the top, and there's like this big ballroom with glass, and you can look out. And there's like a little park below. It was a real nice, nice hotel. And uh, the guys wanted to go down the steps. Well, we wanted to ride in the elevator because it had one of those little springy door thingies that you, mm -hmm. you pull Close. and old timey, yeah, old -timey. and um, so the girls got in the in the the elevator and the doors we close the door and then the door closes and then it, it's slow moving right but it was cool and so when we get home uh, we listen to our recorders uh, you can hear on the recorders us girls getting in. We were discussing the guys wanting to go down the stairs and the girls wanting to go in the elevator. So you can hear us getting in the elevators and you hear the little scissor door close. And then you hear this old man say, can I help you ladies? Uh, on our recorder. And there was not a man in there. It was all women. And, uh, and so... All I can envision is the guy that the bellhop dude that mm -hmm. takes you up and down the elevator. I remember the EVP because it, uh, the cadence of the EVP was really weird. Can I help you, ladies? Yeah. And uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty wild. Yeah. I was not there. He was not. <laughs> he had to work. Working. Boo. <laughs> yes, boo on work. <laughs> <laughs> boo on work. Anyhow, no, I think I think that's pretty cool. I think uh, some good stories. Mm -hmm. Glad to share them with you. And, uh, fun stuff. Now, now we're going to go and have some fun in this building because it's haunted and we're ghost hunters. So Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, Happy people. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye. <laughs>